In this video, we're going to have a look at the graphical smoothing of time series data, also known as median smoothing. So firstly, just a recap, what is smoothing? So smoothing is a special process that we apply to time series data to help us reveal any underlying trends. So sometimes our time series data is quite jagged, quite zigzaggy, has lots of fluctuations. And so smoothing is a process of helping to take out those fluctuations and smooth out the data um, in order to see if there is a trend occurring underneath. And so in the example here, we've got um, the black original time series graph. And then next to that, we've got our green uh, three median smooth data. And the purple finally is a five median smooth data. So with median smoothing, we are grouping a certain number of data points and finding the median of that group. And we'll go through some examples of that in the following section. We're always specified those group sizes as part of the question or as part of the information. The data um, is usually given to us just in this graphical form. We rarely get a, a table. So we don't always have the original data points. So it is a graphical method in that sense. We are doing it straight onto the graph itself most times. And so median smoothing, as I said, is where we are taking groups of data points. So usually groups of three or five or even seven, always odd numbered groups. And we are finding the middle of that group. So that means we are finding the median working across the horizontal axis the EV, and we're finding the middle working up or down, the vertical axis, the RV. And so the example I'm going to use for the next couple of slides is this from a past exam, where we have the time in minutes that Liv ran each day was recorded for nine days. And we have the table here showing those times and the graph itself. And so firstly, let's look at three median smoothing. So as I said, we are taking groups of data and finding the middle of those. So what I mean by that, if I take the first three points on the graph here, so working from left to right, the first three points that I see, I'm going to find the middle of the horizontal, so the middle of the day numbers, and then I'm also going to find the middle value working up our vertical axis as well. And when, remember when we're finding the median, things must be in order. So the way I tend to do this is in an exam or an assessment, what I would do on my paper is isolate those three points, usually by putting my hands onto the paper so that I can just see the three points. But here I've just drawn a box around that for us to visualize. I'm just looking at these three. And then I would take my ruler or something straight and work my way from left to right. And so if I start at the left and I've got three points, so any three data points, the median is going to line up with the second value that I see. Okay, so working across here, the second value I bump into is in line with the two on my horizontal axis. And then I'm going to do the same thing vertically. So again, three points, the second value, will be the median value that I hit as I work up my page. So if you imagine that I've put a ruler on my, on my graph here and I'm moving it up. And so the first point I will intersect is this one on the left. The second point I intersect is this one on day three. So if I draw a little dotted line across and where that vertical line intersects with the horizontal line is where my smooth value is going to go. Now you can imagine if you try to do this for every single um, median value on your graph, it'll get very busy and very messy very quickly. So this is really just to demonstrate what we're doing. And so that's why I say when I'm doing it on paper, I would put my hands on my paper or my calculator on one half and just use my hand for the other so that I can isolate that little group of data points. And so what I now want to do when I'm moving across to the next group, I'm just going to shuffle my way. So I'll just get rid of some of this extra bits. 
I'm going to shuffle my way across one point. So the next group of three is actually, if I take the table, day two, three, and four. And so again, working across my um, horizontal axis, the middle, the second point I hit, is in line with day three. Working vertically up from the bottom up my page, the second point I hit will be in line with this one here. And that where those two meet or intersect is where I put my point. And I continue in this fashion. So I'm just going to move across one more point, take isolate my group of three, working across the horizontal, day three, four, five. So putting my line in line with day four, working up from the bottom. I hit day five first, second one is the one in line with day three. And again, continue on. With groups of three, it can be quick for you to, to quickly identify what you're doing and follow the pattern. You may notice that as I work across each time, I am just literally moving across one of the time periods across that horizontal axis, the EV there. But I do need to check the vertical coordinate each time. So again, from the bottom, I'm looking for the second point I hit. So I hit the one in line with day five first in this group, the one in line day four second. And then that is where I put my mark. and continue. So now working across again, day five, six, seven, so in line with day six, working from the bottom up, I hit day five first, I then hit in line with day seven second, put my mark there, day six, seven and eight, so again in line with day seven, Working up from the bottom, I hit day seven first, then day eight second. And so in line with those two. And finally, I've got day eight, sorry, seven, eight, and nine. And so working across in line with day eight from the bottom up, hit day seven first, then day eight. So you'll see most of the data points were not on top of original data, except for that last one at day eight. The other thing you may notice is that I have no data here at day one, and I have no data point here at day nine. The reason being, if we think about, I need a group of three, and the middle, the median, will be in line with the second value. So day nine, cannot have a data value because there is no data for day 10. So what that means, I can't do this, so there will be no data at day nine in my smoothed um, values, and there also at the other end will be no data at day one. So then one of the disadvantages of smoothing is that, yes, I may be able to get a nice smooth underlying trend, don't think I quite have here with this method, but the disadvantage is I actually reduce the size of my data set. And we all hopefully know that the bigger the data set, the more reliable our data is to make predictions. So we definitely don't want to be cutting it down. Once I have done the smoothing, as I've just done here, I join my marks so that I can create a time series graph underneath. And generally speaking, they may then ask you to comment on the effectiveness of the smoothing. And so what you would like to see is that it has actually taken out those fluctuations from the original data. So I would say that at the, at the end from six through to eight, yeah, it's been effective, but the first part of the data, this method has not been very effective for this particular data set. So what we're going to try now is five median smoothing. Okay, so five median smoothing is maybe exactly what you think it is. We are now working with groups of five data points. 
So when I'm isolating those data points at the beginning, I'm starting at day one and counting one, two, three, four, five data points. So now I'm working with this group of data. And a quick reminder, if I've got five values, the median is going to be in the middle there. So it's actually going to be the third value or the third point that I hit in order. Same when we're working on our vertical scale. So if you think you've got five points there, the third value is going to be where your median point is. Okay, so from this group of five, again, working across, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So working across the third value in line with day three. From the bottom up, and this is where groups of three, you could probably do by eye. Groups of five, I find it really is helpful to use a ruler or a pen or something like that to come up your page to keep track of all the data points. So again, you want to think about the third value that you hit. So the first one in this group I'm going to hit coming up is at day five. The second is going to be day one. And the third is actually going to be that one at day three. So here, our five median smooth value is actually on top of that original data value. Again, my process is I move across one point. So again, a group of five. Means I'm now working day two through to six. My horizontal, again, the third value. So in this case, it'll be in line with day four. From the bottom coming up, I've got, I hit day five first, then day three. Then the third value will actually be in line with day two. So here is where I'm going to put my mark for day four. Continuing on, my next value across, so day three through to day seven. My middle working across on my median in line with day five. Coming up from the bottom, I hit day five first, I hit day three second, and I hit day seven third. So it can be easy to miss a data value out sort of on its own. So just be careful and take your time with this method in particular. Next group. I haven't quite gone far enough. Next group of five. And one, two, three in line with day six. And then from the bottom, again, I hit day five first, day seven second, day eight third. So it will be in line with day eight. And there's my mark. And finally, my final group of five. Working across, we are in line with day seven. Working up, I hit day five first, day seven second day eight, third, and so again, day eight. And once again, we join those with nice straight lines, and there's our five median smoothed. Now what you might notice this time is that there are two data points at each end that no longer have any data. And again, that is if when I'm finding the median of these values, it's not possible to have the last two or the first two because we're finding that third value is our median out of that group of five. So again, five median smoothing here, when we look at the effectiveness, it has been far more effective than the three median smoothing. However, the problem we face is that our data set is now significantly smaller than when we started. So if we were to go ahead and start using this to make predictions about what may happen in the future, we've got a very small data set, so nowhere near as reliable um, as something that would be a much larger. Okay, so that is all for a recap or a, a go through of median smoothing. Good news, there is no such thing as centering in median smoothing. So we only ever deal with odd groups. It is something though that you just need to be patient and practice. And it would be good to do some past exam questions and understand that usually you're not doing a whole graph worth, um, just a couple of points. 
and make, to making the time or taking the time to ensure that you're moving through that slowly and not making any um, little errors that can creep in. Okay, good luck.